Hi, this video is to show you how to work in the single period inventory model. This model is also known as the newspaper problem or news vendor uh, paper news vendor problem. And why is the newspaper problem? Because this in this type of problem, an, an, a news, newspaper seller has the chance of making a decision about the inventory only once. So the person must decide how many how many newspapers is going to put to for sale today and tomorrow the newspaper doesn't have any value. That's also the same type of problem that retailer stores have uh, in the fashion industry. So clothing stores they have to make decisions about how many um, of how many of each of its products they're going to put for sale. In the stores and remember I, I mentioned that in other videos in our classes that for example let's say Zara or Gap or any of those brands they make the wrong decision about how many units they're going to put for sale in the, in the stores and if that's a wrong decision and they 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 let's say they have some uh, leftover they have to put this these products to for sale in the end of the store like um, for a much lower price okay trying to reduce the losses okay this is the type of inventory model that we have for those situations okay so this is the formula we're going to be using and in the slides you can go over some of the more details this is like just to explain to you is the again the average demand this is on average how many units we sell every day let's say 90 units but of course this this demand varies sometimes we sell less sometimes we sell more if we only order 90 units and more people show up to to purchase the products then we're going to stock out and if less person um, show up to purchase the product we're going to end up with uh, extra products not sold okay and 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 then what we make is we make a decision in terms of how additional units on top of the average demand we're going to carry in order to to not stuck out okay that's to explain that and this like determining how many units above or below the average demand we're going to order not to stock out is going to be based on this formula. So this formula formula is going to tell us how many extra units we have to carry to reduce our losses um, and then maximize our profit. Okay, given the distribution of the demand, assuming that demand varies every day. Okay, and this is the my uh, like my step by step process to solve this new newspaper problem. The first step is take note about the problem. The second step is compute this piece of information, cost of underestimate, cost of the underestimating demand, and CO is cost of overestimating demand. So again, if I underestimate the demand, this means that I, I am stocking out. So demand is 90 units, and I underestimated the demand. 100 people show up. On my store and then I'm stocking out with 10 units if I overestimate the demand this means that the demand is much less and I'm thinking I'm think I think that demand is much higher for example on average I think that demand is gonna be 90 but the demand is let's say 80 80 people showing up to buy the product okay so these are the costs that we have here and I'm going to compute them and then use them to compute the probability and get the probability and turn into a Z and then get the Z and plug into the, this formula and figure out how many units we have to produce, buy or put in store, whatever. Okay. Uh, we have some additional slides on how to solve that. You can go over that and if you have questions, you can let me know. But let me use this example to, to show you. This is... Uh, this is a problem about how many overbooking rooms we're going to carry in our hotel. Let's say we have a hotel and then we know that sometimes um, we could so sell more rooms than we have available. But we know 
uh, from previous data that some people don't show up in the last minute. So we can overbook some of our rooms, but how many rooms we're going to overbook? Okay, so this mean demand is on average how many people, uh, how many more units of our room we can sell given the the stockouts in the past. So I'm going to Excel and I take note. I'm, I took notes about the step one, which is mean demand is X bar. So this is the mean or average demand. Okay, so it's five additional rooms. Standard deviation is three. So this is the standard deviation of demand. On average, we, we could sell five more rooms because on average, five people don't show up in our hotel when we, we, over, we sell everything, okay? But sometimes less people show up, sometimes more people show up. This is the reason we have a standard deviation of demand, which is three, okay? The room rate is $80, $80 the room rate. And this is also the cost if overbookings are less they can, than cancellations. So this is our CU. In this case, we don't have to compute the cost of underestimated demand. So the cost of, is given, cost of underestimated demand here in this case is given directly through the price. So we don't have to compute. Let's put this is the cost of underestimate the demand which means I have uh, unsold rooms okay and I, I, I don't know if you remember but we mentioned in class that the problem with services is that uh, the capacity service is not able to I cannot I cannot get an an unsold room and make my hotel bigger next day, create an extra room just because I couldn't sell this the room the day before. So one room that is not um, sold is is lost forever. So this is the cost of underestimated demand. The demand I have unsold rooms, so this is my lost. Okay. And then we have penalty for overbooking. In this case, let's not cost. Let's 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 not call cost, but penalty. The penalty is um, two hundred dollars. This is the cost of overestimate. This is the cost of overestimate the demand. Which means um, I lose money by um, by um, not being able to serve the demand, basically. Okay. So this one. So this is a step two. Like in this case, we don't have to compute. I'm gonna show you another case that you have to compute step two, which is more uh, straightforward. Then we have step three. Step three is compute the probability. The p, the, <clears throat> the probability. Let's take a look here. The probability is the cost of underestimate divided by all costs that I have. So that's the cost of underestimate divided by the cost of of underestimate plus the cost of overestimate. Okay. Oh, okay. This cost and this cost and this. Okay. So now it's 0.28. Then in step four, I turn them into z score, a z value. Remember, this is a probability. I have to turn into a z value. The way to do that is equal norm dot s inverse and then I select this probability so it's a negative number because this probability is below 0.5 this is the reason this is negative so step 5 is to compute how many rooms I have to overbook <coughs> to re uh, minimize my losses 
so rooms to overbook let's call that so this is going to be equal to if we take a let's take a look at the formula and my steps so we, we took note we compute the cost of underestimate and overestimate we compute the probability to turn into a z and now we're going to use this formula which is x bar plus z value multiplied by the standard deviation so it's x bar plus z value multiplied by the standard deviation so i have to uh, this is the number of rooms that i have to overbook the hotel has to overbook so this is the number of rooms to overbook in order to minimize my losses considering uh, this distribution uh, distribution of demand okay so if you take a look here solving the problem uh, I have this so if you compute everything that's what we had three reservations we should overbook three reservations the number of rooms or number of reservations we have to overbook okay let's work on the problem for this first part of problem four here let me do problem four quicker now so let's take note about the problem a product is price let's take price 150 each unit cost 95 and this could be a store like uh, zera whatever uh, clothing store the product costs 150 and uh, the, the the product is priced at 150 and it costs 95 to produce but if i don't sell during the the season then i have to put at the back of the store for sale at 65 dollars so the salvage value is 65 dollars and my average demand my x bar x bar is 40 units and my standard deviation of demand which is my sigma is five units okay so i took note about the steps let me do step two here step two is compute cu and co so according to my proposition here cu is price minus cost is price minus cost so that's my profit how much i'm losing by not selling cost of underestimate i could sell more and the cost minus the salvage value this is the cost minus the salvage value this is how much i'm losing by uh, uh, overestimating the demand so i'm incurring a loss here uh, that's like my cu and co so my step three is compute the p the p is equal to cu divided by the sum of cu plus co that's the formula step four is turning into a z so my z is equal norm dot s oops norm dot s inverse this number and step four uh, finally step five is compute my my um my order order amount or my order amount will be equal to my x bar plus my z value multiplied by my standard deviation okay so i should be ordered i should i should order 42 units in order to minimize my losses of overestimating estim uh, overestimating and underestimating the demand mating the demand okay so this is how you solve uh, uh, the news vendor problem or the also called single period model and here are some applications for overbooking airplanes in hotels ordering of cloth and clothing and so on okay um that's all thanks